The 1946 congressional elections would prove to be one of the most important and consequential elections in United States history. With an unpopular Democratic president and with a rejuvenated Republican Party, the GOP would claim a majority in Congress for the first time in 16 years. The election had bitterly divided the Democrats and threatened to roll back many of the party's earlier achievements. Despite the GOP's early triumph, it would be a short-lived celebration. In just two short years, the GOP would find itself back in opposition, which it would be for decades to come. On August 14, 1945, the United States and the world had awakened to the news that the Empire of Japan had surrendered to the United States and its allies. After six long years of conflict, the Second World War had finally come to an end. The United States had emerged from the conflict as the most powerful nation on Earth and was equipped with a nuclear arsenal to counter the rise of a new rival, the Soviet Union. In emerging from the conflict, the United States did not just have a new role to play in this world, but a new president to lead it. Harry S. Truman had ascended to the presidency following the death of Franklin Roosevelt on April 12, 1945. Roosevelt had left an enormous legacy with his New Deal welfare state, which created the bedrock for what we now know as modern American liberalism. Truman, for his part, had positioned himself firmly as a New Deal liberal, and to prove this point, he addressed Congress in September 1945 with a series of wide-eyed proposals for a post-war America. Amongst these vague plans included expanding Social Security, full employment, and enacting universal health care. The Democratic Party, while still the party of the vast majority of Americans, was bitterly divided between liberals who wanted to expand upon the achievements of the New Deal and the social welfare state, and those conservatives and moderates who were growing increasingly skeptical of the growing strength of the federal government. But perhaps the most daunting task for Truman was a wave of labor disputes that would erupt across the nation. The strikes began when Truman insisted upon keeping in place a series of price controls while at the same time conceding to union demands for higher wages. The result was mass unrest that hit every major industry, including the coal, steel, and automobile industries. This got in the way of what Truman truly wanted, which was to rapidly expand the, the production of consumer goods. The result would be widespread slowdown in industrial output and growing discontent. Truman had to go as far as to threaten to draft striking workers. The strikes would eventually subside, and the workers were able to win major concessions. But in the process, Truman would isolate a major component of the Democratic Party machine, that being organized labor. Truman ran into even bigger issues on transitioning from a wartime to a peacetime economy. With consumer goods in such high demand, American shoppers were anxious to enjoy the many products they had forsaken throughout the course of the war. Price controls were widely used throughout the war, but with the war now over and controls declining, prices would steadily begin to rise. In response, Truman insisted on reinstating some of the controls. In response to reinstating the controls, meat producers would withhold most of their products from market. This led to a situation of high prices and scarcity, especially in meat prices, which Americans were eager to have. Finally, the Republicans had their opportunity to exploit the inflationary crisis and pin the blame directly on Truman. Voter discontent became ripe, and it was summarized in popular quips such as, What would Truman do if he were alive? On election night 1946, the voters made their anger of Truman perfectly clear. The Republicans won a whopping 246 of 435 seats in the U.S. House of Representatives. That was a 55-seat gain. The Democrats, meanwhile, won 188 seats and lost 54. The Labor representative kept his seat 
and the sole progressive candidate in Congress would lose his seat. After 16 long years, the Democratic Party trifecta of the federal government had finally come to an end. Geographically, the GOP would dominate in its traditional areas of support. Affluent Protestants remained steadfastly loyal to the Republican Party, even throughout the party's nadir of the Great Depression and New Deal era. The GOP would also run up huge victories in the rapidly expanding suburbs of Philadelphia, Detroit, and Chicago. Some of the Republican Party's biggest victories were in states like Missouri, which was home to Harry Truman himself. The Democrats, meanwhile, would suffer a severe blow. The party was now more divided than ever between the left and the right, and Truman was caught in the middle and was seen as the man to blame. The Republicans had their eyes on the top prize, and that was the White House. The GOP was hoping that with a Republican in the White House, they could go full stream ahead on a very conservative political agenda. Since the Cold War was heating up and fears of communist infiltration spreading, many Americans were becoming increasingly disillusioned, even fearful of the New Deal, believing that it had communists within its ranks. The 80th Congress of the United States of America was inaugurated on January 3, 1947, with Congressman Joseph W. Martin Jr. of Massachusetts elected as its speaker. Along with Republican control in the Senate, the 16-year-long trifecta had finally come to an end. The priorities of the 80th Congress came with an ambitious and very conservative agenda. Its priority was to undo many of what it deemed to be the excesses of the New Deal without necessarily upending the entire achievements themselves. Truman would almost immediately fall into conflict with this new Congress. With the new Congress, Truman used the GOP majority to his advantage and help him win a political comeback. To solve issues dealing with organized labor that were still hurting the nation, Truman proposed a commission to study the matter for the new Congress to consider. Truman made it clear in his State of the Union address that he would not sign any legislation that would significantly harm organized labor. The Republicans did present into law the Taft-Hartley Act, which would pass into Congress but would meet Truman's stinging veto. The Congress responded with overriding Truman's veto, even with Democrat support. Truman later carried out many of the provisions of the bill, including an 80-day cooling-off period for striking workers. Nevertheless, by at least openly opposing the legislation, Truman was able to portray himself as the champion of organized labor. Beyond organized labor, middle-class consumers were concerned about inflation. Truman had supported keeping some price controls. However, Republicans mostly opposed these controls, which Truman acknowledged. Republicans did pass legislation that would implement controls and rationing. Truman signed these bills into law, though he said that they were wholly inadequate. In turn, Democrats were able to successfully portray inflation as the fault of the Republicans. Especially after conservative firebrand Robert Taft said that Americans should, quote, eat less meat and eat less extravagantly. Democrats interpreted this as being to say, eat less. From issues ranging from housing to health care to inflation, it seemed that Republicans in Congress weren't doing enough. This was the bait Truman had wanted. He would famously call this Congress the, quote, do-nothing Congress at the Democratic 1948 convention. But is this infamous declaration true? In fact, the 80th Congress passed 906 bills during its tenure. In fact, several bipartisan bills were passed during the first post-war Congress. The Congress was especially productive on matters of foreign affairs. Perhaps the most eventful was the passage of the Marshall Plan, named after Secretary of State George Marshall. Nevertheless, the 80th Congress has gone down in infamy for its supposed apathy and lack of concern for the American people. 
Truman's attacks upon the Republicans in Congress was the perfect tactic for him to mount his political comeback and to win the 1948 presidential election. Republicans would go on to lose their majority in both houses in the 1948 congressional elections. This has been Elections in Chill. Thanks for watching.